Bandro. Yes, I'm Mrs. Bandro. How do you do? I'm sorry to bother you, but we're starting our annual contributions drive, and, well, I thought I'd just stop by. Oh, yes, my husband takes care of all of our donations. I know you're on his list. Oh, that's just fine, but, well, we're trying to reach our quota as quickly as possible this year. I was wondering, maybe your husband could make out the check and I could pick it up some afternoon this week. Why, yes, I think so. I'll ask him to do it tonight. Fine, that's just fine. I wonder if you might loan me a pencil. Why, yes, certainly. Well, goodbye. Uh, oh, will any afternoon this week be all right? Yes, except Thursday. There won't be anyone here until dinner time. I see. Well, thank you again, Mrs. Badger. You're welcome. Goodbye. So get this one. Our town council votes me 300 magnificent dollars. Burglary Prevention Fund, they call it. Did you ever hear of an ounce of prevention? Well, that's all Lawn Haven's willing to pay for. Yeah, that's the way it is. The richer the community, the less they want to spend on a police force. I've only got five men in the whole department. So I figured I could either double my force for a couple of days with the money or hire a special investigator for a week. That's you. I hope you guessed right. Say, this fellow's hit you only once so far. Home of W.W. W. Bradley, 4,500 in jewelry and furs. Owner and family away for the weekend. Think he'll try it again? Mike, does a kid come back to a cookie jar when he knows how the lid comes off? This town is one big cookie jar. Was there an announcement in the local paper that the Bradleys were going to be away for the weekend? No, no announcement. He must have got a tip off somewhere. Burglars like these never break into a house unless they know there's going to be nobody home. What about the servants? I checked them. Nothing. No signs of entry, no traces, no prints. Is this about beer? Uh, old man Bradley claims the burglar raided the icebox and drank a bottle of his beer. Well, let's see. Day burglar, probably afternoon. Good taste in jewelry, furs, and beer. If we get anything more on them, we'll send down to New York and ask the police if we can check their M.O. file. Then you think we'll get hit on People like these always follow a pattern. They hit a town hard three or four times. Then when the heat's turned on, they move on to the next rich community that has a small police force. Sure, it could be operating right now. Yeah. That ain't fair, Mike. That just ain't fair. tracks these photographs of the Bradley driveway? Well, they were made by the police car that answered the call, Mike. Chief Kelly. Yeah. 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 Ouch. Remember I told you this town was one big cookie jar? Well, this time he took raisin cookies. George Bandrow's house. Close round of yours? George Bandrow's chairman of the town council. He wants to see me. Uh-oh. Got your crash helmet? Yeah, you. Come on, let's go. Not one robbery, but two robberies in 48 hours. What do you think we appropriated that money for? A municipal bird bath? Why, of course not, Mr. Bandro. I... Wasn't $300 enough? What did you do with the money anyway? I hired Mr. Barnett as special investigator. Is that all you've done? Let me see the list, Walter. Pearl necklace. George gave it to me for my last birthday. One pearl for each year. 
How many pearls in the chain, Mrs. Pandro? Thirty-six. Forty-two. Thirty-six large ones and six small ones. Well, we'll do the best we can to get it back for you, Mrs. Bandro. Were there any articles of value that the burglar left behind that he didn't take with him? Yes, I thought it was strange. He left my black caracal coat and my mouton, and he didn't take any costume jewelry. We don't care anything about what he left behind. We care about what he took. We're trying to establish the burglar's habits, Mr. Bandro. Have you noticed any strangers looking over the house? We don't let strangers snoop around our property. This might be somebody you'd least suspect. A tradesman or a solicitor. Well, there's the milkman and the grocery boy. The gas man was here on Tuesday to check the meter. Well, did you recognize them? I mean, were they the usual people? I don't know. You see, I usually don't answer the back door. What about the front door? Well, a woman came by for the GCF contribution. That's our local charity, Mr. Barnett. Did you recognize her? Did she give her name? No, I don't think so. George made out a check for her. So she said she'd pick it up later. I can check on her with Mrs. Barker. She's head of the GCF fund drive. Good. This may sound a little silly, Mrs. Bandrow, but have you missed anything from your refrigerator? Why, yes. George thinks the thief drank his last can of beer. Oh, good heavens, Sylvia. Who cares about the beer? We do. Did you find the can? Sure. It's in the trash basket out in the kitchen. I'd like to see it. I'll get it. Hey, Mr. Barnett. Naturally, I'm concerned about recovering my property. But I'm more concerned that this sort of thing doesn't happen again. What's well, up to you, Mr. Bandro? Me? You and the rest of the town, fathers. If you and your fellow citizens don't appropriate enough to do this thing properly, your burglar friend's gonna have a field day here in Lawn Haven. All right. I'll call a council meeting in the morning. Good. Star pattern. It's like the can was punctured with an Adam's head screwdriver. What do you think, Walter? Must have been a big baby, at least half an inch. I don't think they've made that head for years. It's worth checking. Well, we'll keep you posted. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Now, ten. And this is most important. Underline it. Be sure to inform the police whenever your house is vacant. Well, that's it. Sign it, Chief Cayley. Our Ten Commandments, Mike. Within 24 hours, that letter will be in every house in Lonhaven. Plus, a spread in tonight's newspaper to be sure everybody sees it. New York City may be able to dig up a couple of M.O. cards. Give me Captain Lundquist at Spring 79970, New York City. What'd you find out, Mike? The beer can was opened by an Adams Head screwdriver, all right. Discontinued model. You're running down the manufacturer, aren't you? Yeah. How's your check on canvases and door-to-door -door salesmen? Well, they're all legit so far, but I'll have the rest of them checked by this afternoon. Something's got to break soon. Chief Cayley. Hello, Lundy. Mike. Mike Barnett. I need some help, Lundy. Yes, ma'am. Is she expecting you? No, I'm from a magazine, The Feminine Touch. We'd like to do a story on Mrs. Leroy. Would you tell her I'm here, please? I shall tell her, ma'am. Yes? Mrs. Leroy? Yes? I'm from The Feminine Touch. We saw the article in the ledger about the way you've done your living room. My, you've done wonders with it. We'd like to do our own feature on it, that is, if you don't mind. Mine? Well, I, I'd be delighted, but... Oh, the place is in such a mess right now, I'm really ashamed for you to see it. We're cleaning. I know just what you mean. Uh, maybe some afternoon this week. Just fine. Any afternoon this week? Uh, yes, except, of course, today. My houseman will be off and I'll be in town. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a ring. Uh, I should have phoned today. But... Well, give me a few days' notice, then I can have the place looking its best for you. All right, fine. Till next week, then. Mm -hmm. Bye. Goodbye. That's right, Mrs. Barker. I want you to check on all your GCF women. 
I thought I made that clear before. Well, I got it, Lundy. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Oh, all right, Mrs. Parker. I'll call you right back. Well, thanks for these cards you sent up, Lundy. They've helped a lot. You ought to be a cop. <laughs> right. If we come up with anything, I'll let you know. So long. Did you get anything? I don't know. New York screened it down to these 20 cards. I'd like to eliminate these for the time being. They're forcible entry artists, say Jimmy Windows. Well, what about that bunch? Well, these are all guys who raid the icebox on the job. These are night men. Johnny Naggett's on the coast, I know. That leaves just these three. Charles Landro, alias Charles Land, Edward Gordon Pinkers, alias Ed Pink, alias Ed the Rebel, and John Dow. Mean anything to you? No. Did any of them operate in the South? Why? Because I checked on the manufacturer that made those Adam's Head screwdrivers. They were only sold to one jobber, a guy in Charleston, and he sells only in the South. Mean anything? Nothing. These guys all work the whole eastern seaboard. Most of these did, too. Great. They're all front door men. They all like refreshments while they work. They all whistle Dixie. Our burglar could be three burglars, or maybe six. There's one thing these three and just these three have in common. Oh, what's that? No fingerprints on their fingers? They all use women to scout the job. What? Listen, Charles Landro always uses girlfriend to reconnoiter prospective job. Ed Pink, last known accomplice, Margaret Stone Pink, wife, arrested Lynchburg, 1952, still serving time. John Dow always uses woman accomplice as spotter and lookout. Yeah. I just know that GCF woman was a phony. Duffy, get me Mrs. Barker right back. I got Mrs. Barker checking on the descriptions of the woman or women who called on the Bradleys and Bandros. <laughs> little capers and the town council's out for blood. Mine and some of yours. We're not late yet, Walter. We're pretty sure now that the woman's in on it. And by now, every homeowner in town should have a description. And every police department in the country, too. How many houses are there in town? About 1,800. If that description doesn't fit that gal... Gal? That description fits half the middle-aged women in Longhaven. I don't know what else we can do, Mike. Just what we're doing. Caution everybody in town not to give out information to strangers at their front doors. Gordon home? Yes, ma'am. May I see her, please? Just a moment. Oh, won't you come in, please? Thank you. Yes? Mrs. Gordon? Yes. I'm Mrs. Hastings from over on the north side. My husband knows your husband, I believe. Uh, oh, yes. This won't take but a minute. I'm on the Greater Lawn Haven Committee, and we're circulating a petition. What for? We're trying to get a consolidated school through the area, and, well, we need prominent signatures. We'd like your husband to sign if he would. Well, uh, I don't know about Oscar. You'd have to ask him. Well, tell you what, I could leave a card, and if he could sign it... I could pick it up either this afternoon or tomorrow. Oh, no, no, that won't do. Uh, why don't you call him at his office next week? Next week? Of course, thank you. Well, don't you want his number? Oh, yes. Yeah. Of course, how stupid of me. It's Lawn Haven 16922. Thank you. Oh, I almost forgot this is your mail. Oh, thank you. Oh, Anna! Be sure and water the plants before you leave. Yes, ma'am. And be sure all the doors and windows are locked. Yes, ma'am. You'll be here first thing Monday morning, won't you? I surely will. Have a nice trip, Miss Gordon. Thank you. <laughs> Lawn Haven 1, 
1100, please. Yes, the police station. A small block of wood keeps the latch from going all the way in. seems to be locked. We'll leave it just the way it is. We won't spoil his plans. Did you tell this woman how long you'd be gone? Well, I didn't tell her anything except to call my husband. I know she saw my bag. Well, did many people know you were planning this trip? Well, I suppose so. It, it was in most of the business columns of the New York papers. Mm -hmm. Well, these conventions last only two days. That means he's got to hit either today or tomorrow. You better get started, Mrs. Gordon. Join your husband and make your trip as if nothing had happened. Well, if you think I should. Just leave everything to us. And enjoy yourself. Well, if I can. Well, uh, goodbye, gentlemen, and please, no shooting. I think she's afraid we'll get blood on the upholstery. How many men can you get here quick? Three. Now you better call them. We'll have to lay out a careful plan with only three men and us. Let's see. Is there a brewery in town? No, there's one in Canesville. That's about six miles from here. Why? I want to get over there and back before our friend arrives. The ticket seller. This one here is the only one that no one seems to own. Sam says he left his car in this lot. Lot empties right after the show. Did you find anything? Yeah. Earrings on the floor of the front seat. A piece of fur caught in the door jam. Looks like ermine. Well, I'll call the license bureau and check on this plate. Chief Cayley, I have the information. License number 4V7634. Registered in the name of Mr. Gordon Reddy and his wife, Louise Reddy. Address 49 Belmont Avenue, Grand City. Okay? 49 Belmont Avenue, Grand City. Okay, thanks very much. Goodbye. Car registered to Mr. and Mrs. Gordon Reddy. Probably a phony, but worth checking. Grand City, that's on the county line. Hold it, Mike. Mount Haven Police, Chief Cayley. Yeah? Sure, right away. Thanks, Sergeant. It's the Grand City Police. They picked up the woman at a bus station. Recognized her from our throwaway sheets. What are they holding her for? For about 20 minutes if we don't get right over there for four charges. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Look, Charlie. Three burglaries in a row in Lawn Haven. This affects the whole county. 
Did she do it? Oh, of course she didn't, but she's in on it. She scouts for the guy. How do you know? Believe me, Charlie, I know. All right, you know, but how do I know? You got any evidence? Not yet, no. Well, look, Walter, I can only hold her 24 hours on suspicion anyway. Maybe that's enough. Except that I've only got four cells and they're full of bombs. The nearest place for female prisoners this time of night is White Plains. I can't put her on the county unless I've got charges that'll stick. This won't do it. Why not? I sent that handbill with her description all over the county. Yeah, but it doesn't mention burglary. This woman is posing as a collector from door to door of funds for charity. Now, that may be a felony in Lonhaven, but it's not in Grand City. It's a misdemeanor here, and we like to have evidence of that, too. I've got it. Back in Lonhaven. Fine. Then you put her in your lockup. You'd have to let her go tomorrow, too, Walter. What? She solicited checks from two people that I know of. The amounts added up to grand larceny. Yeah, but she didn't cash the checks. They were made out to charity. She didn't even pick them up. See here, Mike. You led me to believe we had a case. We have. I've had about enough of this. The humiliation of being arrested in a public bus station was bad enough. But not to even be told why I'm being held here is absolutely illegal. I know my rights, and believe me, you, I'll sue this miserable town for every cent I can if you don't let me go. Let her go. Mike! Hey, what is this? Now, one of you gentlemen, please arrest her. Huh? Well, what for this time? Public intoxication. I'm not intoxicated. Take your hands off me. This is outrageous. Walk that drunk line. I don't understand. I don't either. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. The reflexes are off, too. By golly, I think she is drunk. Oh, well, what if she is? What kind of a charge is that? She pays the judge five bucks and walks out in the morning. Some morning in 1972, maybe. Well, what's he talking about? At the brewery this morning, I had to make up a special can of beer for a thirsty burglar to find in the Gorton's refrigerator. They put a nice head of sodium amytal on it for him. For him? Well, how did she get it? Did you ever hear of a crook who was his own accomplice? Holy smokes. Nice looking couple. I think we should let them share the same cell, don't you?